Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Kuri Irani and welcome to Off the Pitch with Kuri. So I'm going to wait for a few of you to join in really quick because since the time we started this whole session of Off the Pitch with Kuri, we've done it since the lockdown and it's been about 6-8 months now that we've been doing this and every time we try to make it bigger and better for all of you we've also had the head coach of kerala blasters kibu vikuna on the show uh, last time i had um, kerala skin kiss on the show but now how do we make it even bigger and the season's just about to start kerala blasters playing the opening game who could i get as the biggest name in kerala blasters who could do it for manya pada like none of the previous guests have done it who else then your owner yes so today i am very very fortunate that for the very first time the young dynamic owner of kerala blasters nikhil bardwaj is going to be joining us live so i'm going to try and get nikhil to join us live nikhil if you could just quickly join in um so i can i can get the questions out because oh my god everybody here wants to talk to you let's see can i get uh, there we go really quick let's see let's see let's see okay i've already sent a request to nikhil there you are there you hi are. nikhil how are hi, you hi hi good to see you kuri all well all well thank you it, give me a thumbs up I if think you can hear me now i can now i can all right perfect i'm so sorry i just had this little pop up okay, that kept perfect. showing there it's so, so good and i accidentally clicked decline so i think that's what took me off but how are you it's fine i am very good thank you surprise surprise i'm already in goa i'm inside the isl bubble and it's 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 strange times over here which is why right at the start i have to thank you for doing this because we're in crazy times right now the fans are absolutely deprived of the one thing they love more than anything the players are deprived of what they love the most which is the fans thank you so much nikhil in times like this to agreeing to do this live and talking to the fans one on one uh okay so i think nikhil's networks a little off because okay everybody who's watching right now all the fans please in the comment section let me know if you guys can see and hear nikhil very clearly is it my network so then we'll figure this out okay let's see can you guys hear me clearly because i'm not getting the okay we've lost nikhil again so i'm going to send him another request i think there's something about the reception guys you'll have to wait for all good things remember that and talking to the owner of kerala blasters football club is the biggest thing ever nikhil you're back on hi I'm i was so actually so sorry i'm so you. sorry <laughs> No, no, no! Please, I just keep hearing that in parts, but I, I got the part. I mean, firstly, thank you so much for having me no too, Kavi on Ad Manjapada, and thanks for doing this as well, Kuri. Uh, I've been, no I mean, I've been seeing us for a long, long time since the beginning of the season, and and you know, you mentioned that of course, uh, from the fan side, but from our side, it's the same. You know, it's it's a tough season, and and we look forward to to having our fans, as everyone knows. You know, that's what we're known for. But that's one of the biggest reasons, and and we look forward to that every season. But this is a good chance for for me personally yeah. also. uh to to sort of come in and and then you know have this interaction and say a few words True. so really looking forward to it you know for for most club owners and most franchise owners and they've they've all said that they're gutted there won't be fans in the stadium but if there's one club that stands out where it comes to fandom the sheer volume and i never miss a chance to say this nikhil kerala blasters have set records for decibel levels in stadiums not in india but worldwide You guys absolutely. must be the worst affected, no? By this no fans in stadium part this year. Absolutely, and I mean, actually, to be very honest, uh, since you mentioned decibel levels, my my very first experience with Kerala Blasters, and and this was when I was still in uni, was actually the season three finals. You know, and that was <gasps> sort of it was it was against it was ATK was, in Kerala. Against ATK, exactly, exactly, and and that was just when I was sort of coming to grips with the fact we just gotten into the team as well. you know from an ownership but i was just getting to grips it was my first game that year and oh my god unbel- unbelievable because i think i walked into the stadium at around 4 430 and it was already pretty much Back. full getting full and there was <laughs> so absolutely I and mean, totally yeah. unreal you know because because i have an i mean i support man u outside you know my entire life um and then to have a club in india that we got into and to see that sort of reception that sort of noise that sort of you know decibel levels like you mentioned was just totally unparalleled 
So unbelievable. Amazing. You know, Nikhil, actually, you're talking about the season three finals against ATK, and I was there for match the finals minus one day for rehearsals. Mm-hmm. Right. And when we were leaving the stadium after rehearsals to go back to our hotel, it took us two hours to leave the stadium. And this is match day minus one. Minus All one. the fans were there. <laughs> I know. You said you're a big Manchester United fan. I have to ask you this: Doesn't the stadium in Kochi actually rival Old Trafford? Come on. It does. So I actually <laughs> haven't been to Old Trafford, but 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 at the same time, I think now the benchmark is set pretty high, and you know, I mean, to have an Indian club, to have it in Kerala, and now that I've seen Kerala, I don't think it it comes up to that, you know. So yeah, yeah, there's that. <laughs> have you always been passionate about football right from the start? So I mean. Yes, I have been. I mean, uh, but the way it all started was actually. I mean, I grew up playing cricket. You know, I mean, I think most kids in in India end up doing that. Uh, of course. And sort of the the love for football actually started right when I was in grade five, grade six, because this was around a time when I was about to get into cricket more professionally. You know, you have like your youth teams and things like that. And then right, I actually got right. sent to to Canada instead for my yeah. uh, for my education. And since then, I said, you know what? Because I was gonna, you know, I was, I was supposed to go into cricket. That never happened. And then I said, okay, let me pick up another sport because you cannot have cricket in Canada. And I remember yeah. my two roommates were, were from England, and they sort of got me into football. And and that's when Manchester, they're from Manchester as well. So that's when United started. <laughs> and since then, I think it's been all football through and through. So how did you feel when you know you first heard that your father was taking over a football club in India? What was your reaction? I, to be honest, I think. there wasn't any expectation going in you know i also didn't really know you know because i was actually away for a long time so like i mentioned my my first experience into it itself was so captivating that i never really had a chance to think about you know all that we're getting into a football team and things like that so and yeah. it was very much like a fan when i first got in because this is probably my first year of coming to the side on a management side you know more professionally yeah. but until yeah. now it's been like a fan and i've been supporting like a fan like one of the biggest fans Uh, you know, so 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 when I first saw that match, <laughs> now you know, you know, it was just pure. You know, I was just like, wow, what is this? You fell in love. So, I fell in there's love. There's no other way to, to describe it. Hundred percent. I don't think it there's is, any other emotion anyone can feel once you see that. You know, so it it was yeah, it unbelievable it, and what a game and I know, but you know, you said that now you're more involved with the management part of it and everything. So just tell us. you know where do you fit in how involved are you do you also look into recruitments and stuff like that just just tell us overall how involved as an owner are you yeah so i mean so in in terms simply put i would say you know i mean in in a club there are various aspects right so you have your yeah. recruitment and things like that which obviously a lot of fans see in terms of the front, the, the sort of the front facing i would say because the players and 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 the coaches and the recruitment the signings the academy sort of take news but also you have in terms of your marketing in terms of your brand building because kb is such a, is such a big club and and you you're always thinking about how can you take it to that next step you know and mm. not a lot of people know but today i mean and, and the sort of work that we try and do is to try and see how kbfc can can surpass a conversation with just football it needs to be amongst india's top top sporting teams per se you know yeah. there's no reason yeah. why it cannot be because Uh, what sets us apart are the fans, but as a brand, KBFC has a following in India. There are people I know. I've seen fans in the US. I've seen fans in the UAE. Very obviously, you know. And and I think in between there was something in Poland. You know, there was requests coming for 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 fans to go and see uh, Kibu when he was there. Yeah. So, and then it's good and it's growing because the more you have sort of uh, you know players coming in from different parts of the world, you also start to establish. Our clubs over there, you know, people start to hear about it, and and I spent yeah. a good amount of time last year in Serbia, in Spain, in other parts of Europe. So everyone, you know, people know about it, and that's the biggest thing for us, and that's the biggest encouragement for us, and for me personally, you know, coming in from the management. So a lot of it is is the recruitment. I think I do work very closely with Carlis, but that sort of the sporting side is is more uh, his space, and then you mm. have the commercial side, the marketing, the operations, the finances. So so that's that's more on the business side where I sort of come in on a day to day basis. You know? So, you you mentioned in Serbia and Spain, everywhere. See, Kerala Blasters as a club is very famous. Now you know we're doing this live and not on TV or this is not a proper interview. This is on a fan account. This Absolutely. is Manya Bada's account. So I have to ask you on behalf of the fans also. They are present everywhere. But the Indian national team plays regardless of whether we're playing in Tajikistan or we're playing in Qatar. There Whatever. is a Manya Bada presence with a big yellow banner, full on display. How proud does that make you? It's your team that's represented for the national team. No, no, and 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 you know, Kuri, it's like this. I feel like the the best thing that can happen, right? I don't even think of it as as our team because it's just that I am one of them also in those moments. You know, because I am a fan of the club. 
so I think to see these, to see that same group of fans going and representing India, then you know, on so many pages, not just football. To be honest, you mentioned Tajikistan yeah. and India, Indian football team playing, but I've seen Manja Pada fans in cricket matches also. So you know, yes. for, for people to recognize like Manja Pada as a fan group doing all that, you know, and as a, as as a, as a club to have sort of uh, uh, been at the center of that has has a big meaning. And yes, I mean, it, it's a totally different feeling. It's a proud feeling to to be a part of that and to also. You know, now get a chance to interact with them on a daily basis to understand, you know, sort of how we can sort of grow together and how our fans can grow along with the club because they're perhaps the most important aspect, you know. Uh, yeah, so that, you must be so proud. Like, hey, that's my family out there that you're watching. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, my family. 100%. Part of it is that, but part of it is also like, I wish I was there to enjoy that, you know, because they get to Absolutely. do it. But, uh, <laughs> okay. So that's how Since, it is. It's um, super nice. You're the perfect person to ask this question to. So, Nikhil, there are a couple of questions that Kibu sidestepped and Carol is also sidestepped, saying this is not mm. within our jurisdiction. This is something the owner can talk. So, we mm. waited We waited with our questions because none of them have answered. So, it's coming to you. How important mm. of a role has this massive fan following played for you to sign some players, domestic as well as international? Does it kind of boost your pitch a little bit like, hello, we are Kerala Blasters? No, no. Uh, at first, I mean, absolutely. You know, I think uh, the first thing is because I think it's like, you know, for example, I mean, the way I can try and explain this is, is if I'm going to a certain, I mean, when I made my decision on universities, for example, there's always a certain reputation that comes in, you know, for example, that I'm thinking about what is the reputation about that place? Should I go? What sort of things do they have? Et cetera, et cetera. So I think sort of one of the first thing, uh, first things a player also sees. And now, I mean, everyone would have noted that also in terms of the kind of players they're trying to, to sort of look at, you know, they are of a certain pedigree, they are of a certain experience, you know. True. So when the conversation first starts with them, uh, they sort of look at what is KBFC and, and then to firstly see that KBFC is, is a huge club. And then you first type in a picture, you see, you see a huge yellow wall in a stadium. So then they immediately captivated by it, you know. And, and, and fortunately, yeah. we have that compared to some of the other teams which may not necessarily have it. Uh, and, and definitely, it plays a big part uh, for them. It's, it's not the it's not the only one, but it definitely is a big, big reason, you know, for a lot of players to think because that immediate perception uh, matters, and and that's what they yeah. see, and and that's when you see a lot of them when they first come in, also addressing the fan groups, you know, because they realize that this is something a lot bigger than they probably even they expected. So true, true. That's all. So Nikhil, um, also there are a lot of fans who've been sending in these yellow hearts and they're sending a lot of love and they're talking a lot in Malayalam right now which unfortunately oh I don't, I, oh, I, I just know one line in Malayalam. <laughs> so, so I will, I just say Namaskaram Kerala, that's all I can say. I just, I just say hello to everyone. But Nikhil, uh, there are a lot of these fans who want to know what different philosophy or what different road will KBFC be adapting this season because they are hungry for silverware. So, I mean, firstly, I'm glad you didn't put me on the spot with Malayalam because I, I, I haven't picked up. But I also say Namaskaram to everyone that's, that's joining. And, and I'm, I'm generally, I, I love food. I'm a very hungry person. So the only other sentence I do know is, is something to say uh, that I am hungry, but I'll not say that. You know, but I can say if, it's, if that, does that make sense? You know, say in a similar, it. In a similar, it's better than what I know. It's I better think, than what I... I think that's how they say it. So I think <laughs> since you mentioned the fact that fans are hungry, if that can be used in the same same way, then, you know, why not? So okay, what would hungry, you like to eat? So then now the next question coming from the fans is, okay, if you were hungry and you said this, what is the next thing you'd want to eat? Your favorite oh, dish, I mean, quickly. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Hyderabadi boy, so biryani, but then you have, you know, I always say, I'll be safe and I'll say, I'll, I'll say my beef fry, but I've had some biryanis in Kerala mm. with beef fry also that I really, really, really like. In Kochi, actually. Yeah. So amazing. You know. The beef coconut fry with the, the yes. typical paratha that they have. Oh, yeah. Yes. Let's yes, get yes, back yes. to talking football. <laughs> Major cravings happening. But okay, tell me about the philosophy of Kerala Blasters this year. How what will be a little different this year so that you can aim for that silverware in your cabinet? So so I mean, okay, so not on the playing side because I think that they would have answered enough of that from a keyboard yes. at this point of view, but from a very uh, you know, sort of looking at it. Progress-wise, I think that the first thing that we said this year was, look, when we're making a lot of changes structurally, we want to be in a position at the end of the year where everything we're doing, there has to be some results. And results, obviously, directly you see in terms of improvement in, in your position, right? So that's sort of the first thing. And and then to that, uh, uh, you know, anything less than a top four from our point of view would be uh, would, would be a disappointment, you know, with, with the sure. kind of efforts that we are putting in to put, put uh, things in place. But more generally and more, you know, on a macro level, I think it, what matters is, is progress, you know, and, and the way we see a lot of fans, I think in the years past, they talk about we finished ninth, we finished, you know, we, it's not ideal, but 
from the way I like to see it at least is that from a ninth even to a seventh. So this year we want to take that step forward. You know, keep it simple, make that next step, and of course, from the next step for us means getting into that top four because from there you build. And and mm. fortunately, you know, now that we have that structure in place on on a playing side with with a sporting director overlooking the entire sporting side of things, obviously that gives us a lot more confidence. You know, that we can go right. move in that direction where we will see right. a, a positive step towards that. So, right. Right. So one of the other philosophies also we've seen consistently with teams who have been successful in the Euro Indian Super League is consistency. We've mm-hmm. tried to retain the core of the squad and all that. Has that always been a challenge for Kerala Blasters? And is that something you're looking to do going forward this season on? No, so absolutely. I think consistency is key. Uh, you know, and and I think to a certain extent, the nature of Indian football till such time, you know, and and of course there are clubs who've done this really well. You know, there's a lot of models you see. Clubs that happen, you take ATK, you take Bangalore, you take FC Goa. I think you see that there's been consistency since the first, yes. uh, you know, uh, since the very beginning. And that, of course, I think that's something we also want to have. But I think a lot of the things, a lot of the sort of tools that need to be in place are there now to achieve that, you know. And this year is probably the first where we've had a core group of at least 10, 15 guys we know are, are with us long term. So you know who you're building your future. Yeah. Convince routine and things like that. What about local talent? There's a plan over there in place, as a plan in action right now to discover, to to hunt for, to promote, to encourage local talent and more representation from Keralites in the Hero Indian Super League in your club. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and actually, we sort of, we, re- we relaunched our entire grass. And there's two parts to it. One is your academy, which is sort of your your, your football academy. And another yeah. is sort of your base of the pyramid, you know, which is what is eventually going to feed into. I don't want to say it's going to happen tomorrow because it's not. You know, it takes no, time. It takes about five, six, seven years of investment, of sort of dedication to it. And, and that's what we sort of set out to do. So where we revamped, yeah. actually, there's a program called Young Blasters, you know. That we launched, and and unfortunately, COVID happened at, at this time. You know, otherwise, we would have launched over the summer. And it's a really comprehensive plan. We want to enter directly with the, and, and Kerala has a lot of public and public private schools, for example. So the idea was to yeah. sort of partner with them, where we can deploy our coaches or even teach your PE teachers. You know, so that the basic understanding at a ground level for a kid who's five and six is is mm. there. They start to think about sure. football. They start to have fun with football and things like that. You know, so. That's sort of yeah. the starting uh, starting uh, thought for anyone who wants to come in uh, from a Kerala point of view. But yes, even from an academy now. So we have someone who, apart from Kerala, we have a gentleman named Rafiq who over- overlooks our entire uh, grassroots bit, an academy bit, right? So he's sort of been instrumental mm. in now picking up players in Kerala from your Santos Trophy team, from your local Kerala tournaments, you know. So in years to come, hopefully with the right development and, and you know, and then the right sort of coaching that we're sort of focusing on right now to provide to these players, you will see a lot more local talent because that is always important, you know. In a yeah, club yeah. from Kerala, you need that. And and, and you see Absolutely. with you, you see with, for example, Sahal and Rahul, you know, when you have players like that, you have Arjun Jairaj, you have Haku. And the moment you have those guys, a lot more kids start to look up saying, you know what, that's a guy from Kerala, I want to do that. And then, you know, and, and that's what you need. You need more of those heroes coming from coming from your state. So Absolutely. And you're right, you know, that is the future. Today, if you have the under 14s and the under 16s, in three years, in five years, they are the ones, it's homegrown talent. Absol- so that absolutely. helps even from the, the marketing, the finance point of view also. Secondly, mm-hmm. if you, you know, they've always said that if you catch them young, everything from their nutrition to their fitness to their discipline, it's all channelized so well, which is some of, some of the things the senior players today did not have. There was mm-hmm. no hero Indian Super League and there weren't these big platforms for Indian players, say, eight years ago or 10 years ago. So Absolutely. You'd Absolutely. want to encourage infrastructure also. 100%. And I think, I mean, to a certain extent, I think with the academy being there, and I think it's good, you know, in some ways, it shouldn't be that a league has to mandate these for uh, for clubs to do because that should be something that clubs are doing. But I think in many ways, yeah. also the way the league is working today, helps tremendously, mm-hmm. you know, because they take an active effort to also ensure that clubs are doing the right thing, where they're really sort of, you know, uh, taking the initiative to push clubs to to sort of have their academies in place. And, and like you mentioned, infrastructure, yeah. you know, so having grounds, basic facilities that people can grow in the right environment is, is always super important because otherwise, you right. I mean, they'll still learn, but, you know, th- there's a big gap uh, that you see if they're not growing in the right environment. So, and then I think okay. to that, I think it's starting to come closer and closer, bridging that gap. So, which is Absolutely. always good. Yeah. 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 So, Nikhil, there were, there were, 
truckloads of questions that have flooded my Insta DM and it's flooded Manjapada's DM and everything. But I'm going to tell you in order, the first question that came up the most is a very simple one for an owner. The second question that came up was tricky. So at any point, if there's any question you want to sidestep or not answer, the fans mm -hmm. will understand. Okay. So first Fair I'm enough. going to ask you the one, of course, as an owner that you can talk about. Uh, the maximum number of fans have asked this question about a club-owned stadium someday. Is that in the pipeline? Has that even come up on the table when you have, you know, your directors' meetings and stuff? No. So, so yes, I think actually at some point, I think even that actually went out. I think this was some point last year to say that, look, first thing is, is we're here long term. And the second thing is when you're there long term, that is the vision, you know, because when you have that, you can unlock a lot more things, you know, with regards to restrictions. Today, you're dependent on other people for your stadiums and things like that. And, and, and we're yeah. fortunate, we're lucky that it, 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 the relationships are good. But having your own stadium has a whole different meaning, you know, for example. And very, so, very small but simple detail is also today, for example, in a stadium, the fans sit so far away from where the pitch line is. You know, and you probably know if you've been to Old Trafford, like even you know, since you're also a Man U fan, that, that makes a difference to a small element yes. that when you have that advantage, you want to make use. But on a general level, absolutely. I think it is part of the vision to, to have that one day. Uh, but I, it, it, is, it, it is something that in our heads, at least, is, is, is a little bit away. You know, the immediate priorities mm. obviously are to improve your infrastructure with the cars to the academy and things like that because your players currently uh, are the most important. And that's how sort of we are seeing it, you know, in the immediate yeah. future. So as a long-term plan, but, uh, definitely, you know, the, the stadium is part of the vision. So okay. it's just a combination of many factors Thank that have to fall into place. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And we understand that now, especially with the challenges that have suddenly come up this year, from the owner's perspective, just give us a little insight into what's happening on the inside of a club between the management and the owners and the players. What are the challenges with this different situation that we're facing this season? So uh, I think, I mean, I think it, it's in phases, to be honest, if I can answer it that way, you know, because I Go think when it, when it sort of first first started, uh, you know, and I'll try and also say not just from a player and player side, but also, you know, it's very uh, out there in terms of clubs financially, everyone plans, you know, in terms of what the budgets are and things like that for a season. Uh, but immediately and on the player side, and I think one of the first things that sort of we felt, you know, uh, we had a new team coming in totally. You know, on the, on the sporting side, we had a Callis who was supposed to come in early April. So he could sort of come, integrate with the entire team in Kerala on, on the sporting side with, with the local, with the reserve coaches, the academy and things like that. But obviously, all of that was sort of, you know, pushed back because that couldn't happen. Kibu could not come in early. He had to stay yeah. back for some time, you know. So uh, it was obviously a challenge, you know, when you try and find a way around. And of course, the most important thing is players. You know, now you want players playing, even though they're in, they're fin they finished the season. The biggest challenge is six months without football is a big, big setback for them when they try and come into a preseason that, you know, and this year is especially short. So, I think in, in some ways it was tough, but I, I think also at the same time, it always pushes you to find solutions, you know, and I think ultimately yeah. there was a way that we sort of worked around it. And, and luckily, our entire coaching staff was, you know, was in place along with Catalyst very early on. So the fitness regimes all, it all started. They're able to tap into plans and things like that for the players. But even from a, from a, from a other point of view, from a management point of view, it's a great opportunity to be very honest with you, you know, when everything, the focus is on digital, the focus is on staying connected. It also gives us an opportunity to sort of, you know, what more can we do as a club to try and stay uh, more connected with fans, try and build the brand, you know, yeah. and, and in that it was an incredible opportunity for us. And that's something that that was a big part of what we are trying to do uh, throughout the summer, you know, coming out with something yeah. different, trying to increase your engagements, trying to find more ways to connect, give more touch points for fans to interact with the club. You know, and, and this is still part of it, you know, to try and actually to actually be able to talk to a fan group directly, you know, and, and, and it's always it's always a good thing. It's so, amazing that you've even absolutely. agreed to do this. It's it's so it's such a relief for the fans because they have so many questions in their mind. Like one of the most common questions, Nikhil, also was a lot of people were speculating that maybe things last year didn't pan out the way they should have because of the preseason or the mm -hmm. lack of exactly the perfect preseason that a team is supposed to have. This mm -hmm. season, if you can say, has been the worst affected in terms of preseason, mm -hmm. right? So that that's one of the other challenges. And as, as an owner, you have to day in and day out struggle to live up with the protocol and the regulations. And you know, God forbid, if someone's injured in preseason and all of that, are you like constantly in touch and you're constantly firefighting? It, it, it is a bit like, I mean, I wouldn't say firefight because I enjoy it, you know, and it, it's easy, it makes it easier that we're so passionate about it. But at the same time, it is a lot of it, you know, especially close to the season, there's 10 different things. And the biggest thing is COVID is still happening. You know, it's one thing if it is all behind us, but 
actively yeah. on a day to day you know you're sort of waking yeah. up thinking yeah. okay i just hope no player is some nothing has happened to any one of my players then there's a second layer that you know because pc is so short that you don't want these things to happen but you know the, i mean credit to credit to the entire team that's in place because they take on a tremendous amount of work also you know so they make it easier on a day to day basis and 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 for me kuri personally also it, it being my first year i think there's been a tremendous amount of learning for me you know and mm. and and last year also being one that was sort of difficult and and when you sort of go through failure you know and i'm saying seventh place is a failure even though you know it, it, it failure in terms of we need to be in the top four so that's very clear in terms of our mentality this year you know not it, it's top four and and that's what we have to aim for but that's how we sort but you learn a lot and and that's something for us all internally it's it's a clear brief that you know no matter what and that's one of the best thing about football and sport is that you either win or you learn you know so last year yeah. was about learning and this year can hopefully it can be more about winning so absolutely the fans are thrilled that you're yeah. even using these words just use them as often as you can nick this is why we are here <laughs> the season's a few days away it's the opening match again but okay again so Nikhil, I've got you here. We, you know, it's like a training drill. First, it's warm up, mm-hmm. so it's all nice and easy. Now, warm up. Okay, now the actual drill has to start. So there are a lot of player questions, and I'm going to start with the very easy ones. Again, I I want to repeat and reiterate. You can sidestep whenever you want. But what? How easy or difficult was it to steal someone like Nishu away from BFC and bring him to Kerala? Because I know this. I know this on the inside. A lot of clubs were vying for his signature. he was really in demand and then he just picked kerala blasters how hard from an owner's perspective is it for you to pick someone like that no so i i so first to be honest the first thing and and this is what you you brought this up kuri actually the first thing is is what helps us you know when we go into recruitment is the fans you know that's the first yes! thing that they see so so to be very honest and that's how it is so that starting point becomes easier Uh, yeah. but from there on to be honest uh, it is just about trying to be as genuine about it as possible and i think somewhere you know the for me at least this this was the conversation when we had with nishu uh, i'm also relatively young you know i'm 24 now so more or less the same yeah. age and 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 this the fact that you're able to talk to someone and communicate and you're able to relate that experience you know yeah. in terms of you want stability as as a kid i i want to know exactly where i'm going to be 5 years from now and that's sort of the plan yeah. we gave to him that you're not just coming to a team for one year but here you come in and now is the chance yeah. for you to sort of take on more responsibility also because you've established yourself in bangalore and and full credit to them as well you know the way they sort of brought him up from their academy to to the first team and then him going on to play for india so now that you've achieved that kerala is sort of the next step that you know for you uh, and you need to come on take on the responsibility and and you'll enjoy it you know when you, you start called, oh, wait 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 you called kerala the next step I like it. Yeah. I like how you nicely just <laughs> put it in. It's, so you played for Bangalore, you played for India. Now this is the next step. आगे बढ़ना है. हाँ, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I won't try and show <laughs> code in any which way, but I mean, at the same time, full full credit to them as well. You know, because a lot of what he is today is, you know, it has to be that he, there is a lot for him to also be grateful to them for. You know, hmm. um, and and in terms of his development, in terms of what he comes in with the mentality as well. So. and now we take him on and now luckily he's also working with someone who's been in and and, and careless to be honest he's been in lithuania he's from lithuania you know and mm. and when sort of the the idea there is not just on a playing level but also on a mental level you're pushing mm. you're pushing a mm. player to think beyond you know how can you take True. on that that next next challenge yeah. so that's what it was but always always a good feeling when a big player or indian player is 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 coming to your club you know so that's what it is i'll give you i'll give you a little secret here okay i talk huh. to players on a one on one basis and not just pre match and post match even otherwise we interact we sit down we like bros yeah we just sit down and talk huh. every player at some point wants to play for kerala at Clear. some Clear. point okay so it's it's just there in them like ek baar to wo experience chahiye yaar when you walk out of the tunnel and that and that thunder for you, you know your name thundering around every player has that dream but you said something right now you said one of the things that Uh, attracted someone like Nishu also was you telling him about the future plan, looking at a mm-hmm. five-year plan, and that is very important not just for a young Indian player but also for a lot of international recruiting that you have done. Absolutely. You've got some mm-hmm. massive names from international football to sign in. What was that that future plan that you were talking about to them that actually was the main selling point? So, uh, so to to be very honest, uh, Kuri, I think uh, a lot of the times, right? I think it, in many ways, when they see that structure of the club, you know, when it, when it's clean, when there when there's a certain vision in terms of 
where you want to be in the next five years. And and like I mentioned this earlier, you know, the fact that today we play, of course, we play in the Indian league, but there is there is a set of fan base in in the UAE, and that's something we've thought about yeah. in the past. Where you know, it, we wanted to do that, we couldn't achieve it. Obviously, yeah. this piece didn't go to plan. But you know, to try and grow this football club outside of just what it is in India, and and that's something the that natural sure. extension would be to to that part. And it's just about mm. showing these players that look where you're coming into is not a small league. Don't think of India as a step down in any which way because if that's the mentality, we don't want you. you no, know, you need to think of India being as one that's really rapidly growing, which is a fact. You know, everyone knows about it, which is why it's not just us. There are so many other clubs and so many big players. You know, so much, so much experience coming into India. Uh, and, yes. And that's something everyone needs to recognize. And 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 in the same line for us as well, the five-year plan is is we want to. To win, but winning consistently is 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 even more important. It's not just about winning one year and then you know, or coming into top four for one year and then going back. No, so it Absolutely. needs to be consistent and it needs to be about building uh, and then you know, sort of seeing that improvement year after year in terms of where True. we are. True, and and you're right. It's not none of the international players actually would ever consider this like a retirement league. Oh, we're just going to India for a few months now. We'll play golf and we'll come back. No, mm. this is serious. This rivals some Absolutely. of the biggest clubs that they've played. And uh, even if they played a top English football, they still come and see all these clubs. Even sheer professionalism, Absolutely. they rival international clubs. And since we're on the Absolutely. topic of international clubs, Nikhil, what's your take on collaboration of <coughs> ISL clubs with foreign clubs? Uh, so I two parts actually. I mean, look, I think it's if I can speak for every other partnership that's happened in the in in the in the league till now you know there's been different kinds there's been one some that have been an investment which I think is fantastic because you know when it, it's a great validation for for our league and how quickly we've grown into becoming what we are you know True. at the same time the fact that there are people recognizing the sort of growth that is here the sort of opportunities that India can provide both for yeah. players because you know that's always it's one of the first things that everyone says you know that look there's a billion people so why can't we create a player like a Messi or Ronaldo for example Sim- as a thought, it's simple, but I think it takes a lot of effort. So to have someone investing into that also is is fantastic. And at the same time, even with regards to collaborations that are happening, I think it's one thing to have a partnership, but it's it's another. For, if I can speak personally, to also to to sort of have the right partnership and and you know for it's mutually for beneficial. Beneficial, uh, exactly, absolutely. Yeah. Mutually beneficial partnership is most important, you know. And then for us personally, you know, I think that's something we're always. You know, we're always interacting with clubs to understand what they're looking for, and for them to also understand what we need and what we're looking for. But somewhere for us, we felt that look, we are we are still in that path where we can grow, you know. And then the opportunity comes and never averse to it. But at the same time, I think the fact that other other clubs are coming into into India definitely helps uh, our case as well, you know, because other everyone around mm-hmm. the world starts taking note of of, of what's happening. So and and everyone I'm sure is interested in in you know collaborating with the biggest fan base that there is and some Absolutely. massive names in the world of football also that you have signed and I'm sure there's interest coming from all around. You're holding your cards very close to your chest, Nikhil. I I, I keep that a surprise. <laughs> I think I think I've found lots of prizes, so I keep that also as a surprise. <laughs> okay, what did actually another good thing that did come as a surprise was a massive announcement yesterday. Uh, Byju's coming on board as the title sponsor. Absolutely, no, no, and 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 that one, Kuri is is to be very honest, extremely special. You know, both. I yeah. mean, for for many reasons. I think the fact that at the end of the day, it's a club from Kerala, and we talk about players from Kerala, but to have a brand like them, which today is the world's largest, yeah. you know, uh, tech platform, and and it's another sense of emotion and pride for for our fans to not just support a club, but to also support a club that is now being represented by, uh, by by one of the biggest brands in that space, and. Yeah, and to be honest, not just them. There are more than there, there's actually I think close to four brands now from Kerala uh, that will be you know that will be sponsoring us. So I think to to that I think also uh, we're trying to stay true to that whole modicum of us being a Kerala uh, club and being true to the state as well. You know, not just with players where we obviously want to have as much homegrown talent, but also to sort of use this as an opportunity for you know the the brands. There are so many people doing so many great things for them to yeah. also uh, to. To realize that KBFC is the right uh, uh, way for them to go. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So Nikhil, very now, very nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to the whole player conversation that we have because everything ultimately surrounds the player. I mean, it's it's all huh. it's the players. That's it. It all stems from there. It starts from there. It ends there. It's the players. The players represent all the lakhs of fans around the country. How hard? Um, how difficult was it as an owner? For you to part ways with some players who were the life and breath of the club, they were the spine of the club. They were synonymous with the club, and 
also senior players like maybe like Ogbeche who was barely there for one season but is already the highest scorer in a single season for Kerala Blasters. From a business perspective, did you have to look at it a little coldly like, okay, this is a strict business decision or was there more emotion involved? Just tell me from your perspective if you have come to comfortable answering this. No, no, I think there's nothing to hide to be honest. Uh, the fans really want to know. Is... It's their biggest question. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. And and I think, okay, so so there's obviously always emotion involved. You know, it, it's never easy. It's never, never, ever easy to let go. But uh, the coldness sort of doesn't even come in uh, in terms of, of, of the financial standpoint, you know. To be very honest, it's more from a point of view that look, as a football club, and this happens not just with us, it happens every year around the world. You know, there will yeah. be a time when a player comes and there, will, there has to be a time when they move on. You That's know, football. It's a different challenge. That is football. And you have to be yeah. used to it. And and yeah. somewhere I think I think Kibu mentioned it very early on the the, the, the biggest the, the biggest player is, is is the club or is the team, you know. And I don't want to sort of the go biggest back to that player in the team is the team. Is the team exactly. And I don't want to sort of go back to that as you know in terms of sort of justifying anything. But it is true, you know. No matter what happens, I think fans also just sort of have to get used to the same way we had to get used to it. It's a tough decision, and we it, there is some hangover for some time. But you you realize that look, whatever you're doing. You're doing for the club to to make that next step, you know, and and in this case, of course, uh, Sandesh and and Bard both will will be will be missed, you know. But at the same time, uh, with Sandesh, for example, I think there were certain things that he also wanted, which we also had to respect, you know. After six years, and he's coming sure. and and asked, you also have to try and respect that because that's what he wants. So, and yeah. nothing but uh, thankfulness and gratefulness for them to have been a part of our club. So that, that's how it is. That is so sweet, Nikhil, of you to say yeah. that, and and of course, every everyone wishes them the best. But like we said, this is football, and this happens everywhere. Yeah. Legends Absolutely. move on. It it always mm-hmm. happens. But from your perspective, what would you say this season, especially for Kerala Blasters? What would you s- s- count out the strengths and the weaknesses? Like, which parts of it do you think that okay, this still needs to be worked on? So I mean, to be honest, I think okay. So I'll I'll start with the weaknesses, and this is more I I would say situational and and not just something that sort of we are, are likely to face. Uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, no matter what sort of teams uh, or what sort of players, other teams have also been able to put together. A lot of it will come down to uh, preparation. You know, and that's sort of one thing we wished we sort of had more time. You know, we wished we had a little bit more time for preseason and things like that, where you could have worked. Where you could have really focused on building that fitness and things like that. So that that I mean I don't know if it's a weakness to be honest because I want to say. But that that's all teams, Nikhil. Yeah, Everyone's teams, facing but, that. Yeah, absolutely. And and at the same time, so since you asked about about a weakness, that's something I feel you know in terms of it could become something that becomes crucial in deciding you know who goes who yeah. takes the next step and doesn't. And 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 luckily the good thing and that brings me to my strength is is having depth. You know the fact that from last year we have a core set of players who stayed back. And and even in terms of a coaching uh, change, I think we have someone who sort of come into a f- philosophy that was built last year. You know, and credit to Elko for for what he did in that. You know, he, he sort of brought about a style that fans appreciated, and that's something we also wanted to to try and move towards. And and you're building yeah. from that, so you have the players also who understand that who are now with us for a long term. So you know exactly what you're building with and what you're building towards. And and that yeah. probably I would say is a strength because you have that not just with the with your starting players, your you know you also have that in, in depth. With players who are coming and understanding that, so that's okay, where so, I, that's where it is. So not a lot I, of not a lot of creases to iron out. Really, y'all have been progressing over the last ten seasons, so it's it's a good thing. Another one of the questions that have come in is: Can we expect better fan engagement activities from KBFC in the upcoming season? So, from a fan mm-hmm. engagement perspective. I'll, I'll, yeah. I, so yeah, definitely. I think I think this year, especially, I think that I mean there are certain conversations always. You know, we're always talking to 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 fan groups. You know, and 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 yeah. uh, to to try and see how we can bridge that to try and find a way to sort of make this experience even better. And and, and it's not just about matches. You know, it's also about something happening, which sort of uh, uh, membership and things like that, which we are sort of re- revamping again. Uh, you know, and, yeah. and it all comes on to be very honest because we've had some in the past, but some of you weren't happy with it, so we thought. When you're doing it, and now that we find, found some stability on the sporting side and someone to take care of that, now even on 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 these things, these more important things where you're creating touch points and things like that, we want to be able to give more to fans and give them more of sort of a you know insight into what is happening in a day to day for them to feel like they're a part of a team, especially in a tough year like where we are today. So, so yeah, definitely there will be there will be more uh, chances to engage with with the club and the fans. Lovely. Okay, that's 
very heartening to hear nikhil i've asked this question to every player that i have interviewed i've asked this question to the coaches as well so it's known that every experienced player feels the pressure of expectations from the fans as an owner as you know as someone who's so intricately involved in the day to day activities of the club do you also feel that or do you thrive on it like a, a smaller fan group is automatically less of pressure you're answerable to lesser questions and there's lesser lesser dirt being thrown at you when things don't go your way a bigger fan group more pressure what do you think no, you thrive on it I, yeah i think i mean in in some ways yes but i think it's always good to have pressure you know it's always it always keeps you at the edge to sort of think about what more you need to do you know so that's how we like to at least to see it and and to be very honest with you i think a lot of uh, uh, you know and and this is not just me you know i can speak on behalf of the entire management the fact that fans are educated you know it's not just about i mean yes you know in the moment everyone feels and, and i feel when you know a team loses a kerala kbfc loses we feel bad but for for a fan to be able to see beyond what else is happening for them to try and themselves understand and there's so many things you see articles etc being written about what the club is doing why from a fan's perspective i'm talking about why they sort of bring in a sporting director why xyz is happening for them to think beyond just a win and loss itself is a big plus for us because we know that there yeah. is pressure to you know there is always there always needs to be pressure to perform when you're coming into a stadium you need to feel that you're you're doing this and you you're carrying this sort of you know who you're doing it for uh, right. but at the same time it, it is also a big 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 push for us to really try and up our game every single time so right. and then we thank our fans for being understanding and you know in the fact that the last few years haven't been easy but uh we are always at, at the you know trying to improve and and there is you know we just want you to trust the process that that is uh being put in play so you love this pressure you love being answerable yeah. to them because at least it validates the fact that you have thousands of fans to answer to so you yes. you absolutely yeah, love I, that i hope i hope the results will speak for themselves you know oh, that's yeah. how i'd rather have it be but yes i mean in terms of pressure to my mind is is good in many ways so absolutely uh nikhil one of the other questions is if you had a chance to sign one indian player before the season starts whom would you want to grab for kerala <laughs> nice to be, to be to be to be very honest i think with the indian squad we have where where we're very happy with where we are but i mean you know i i think there are certain players that i always appreciate and now i can say you know from my amateur sub amateur football level since i was playing as an attacking midfielder i'll go for someone who i've always seen i really you know so I okay. thought that they're a really good player. I think uh, Brandon Fernandez is someone I've always oh. appreciated. You know, and I, yeah. you know, and I know he's at a different club. I don't want to disrespect any which way, but I've always appreciated the way that he's played. Uh, you know, but and and there are a lot of others. There are a lot of uh, of good kids coming through, and and you know, so the okay. focus. Well, we so have Brandon, the team we have let's is, stick yeah, to that. Brandon. Okay. Yes, and and there My are also God, a lot of just... kids in the academy. There are a lot of good kids in the academy coming through. To be very honest, so. maybe not this year but i know from from a pre season perspective there are a lot of kids in the academy so in maybe you know i don't know about this year to be honest because we have still haven't announced our final squad but at least in the next year uh yeah so so some good good ones to keep an eye out for okay uh, but you already got academy. some you already got some tongues wagging you know no just by the answers that you <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good thing which is why yeah, which is why which is why i said it's a position i played so that's a position you know that immediately yeah. strikes my eye <laughs> no but it's good it, you know even you were talking about fan fan engagement and everything and manya pada themselves are also doing so much more to keep themselves motivated to keep themselves as much a part of the team even though they physically cannot be present like as part of their for seasonal activities they're planning to do activities such as flags for all and yeah, banners yeah. everywhere these are the two uh, do you know about this that they're going to yes, be doing yes, this yes 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 Ab- absolutely that they've given out i think i don't know if they've given out the banners yet or not but for the opening game to, for a lot of people to have them for them to make some noise even in a season when everyone's going to be home you know and the yes. fact that you have it when you're watching on tv with the family i think it all adds to it yes you know yes. so 100% 100% it, it it is incredible and and you know and, and for us it, again like it really in many ways it makes our job easier as well when a fan group also is is taking initiative and and manjapada is one but there are also so many you know i mean the, it, it's it's so big this entire kbfc fan base and, and the thing is when you go to sort of the north of kerala you go to the south of kerala you have people from all over you know and then and it's like any other city where you have different small like differences when you go from top and bottom in a positive way where you have your own way of expressing you know yes. so it's it's so incredible to see but uh, not just kerala time. even every away game you yeah. go to jamshedpur you go yeah, to guwahati yeah, yeah. which is the farthest away from kochi 
there will still be massive always like the away stand is still full over there full, it's always I that way i remember even i mean i have grown up in hyderabad and we, we live we're from hyderabad so i remember in that first game against hyderabad last year oh, as well yeah. you know because obviously i was i was i was about to hear from my friends and things like that but to also for them to see it's like what is going on you know the fact that they see yeah. Uh, a, a yellow sort of thing right in between and then that game the in bangalore the sea of yellow it's, it's a yellow, yellow sea yeah sea. it's Ab- crazy absolutely and that game in bangalore as well you know like that's something you cannot really explain to people oh what it is God. unless you show them and then they're in total disbelief like look what is this like what what is happening you know but that is that is she a power and so that was so 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 grateful you know to have that on our side you know for the game in bangalore the away game So <clears throat> I was there match day minus one, and we set up a camera. At, at, I, I don't know the name of the station, but at the railway mm-hmm. station, we just set up one of those cameras which was just recording. Okay, there were thousands and thousands of yellow shirts just they, they were just flooding out of the trains. Oh my goodness! Pouring out of the train and all making a bee line towards Kintir. Right, it was unbelievable. But since I'm on the topic, it's another mm-hmm. fan question, and I've written it down. If you want, I've actually mm-hmm. written it down. Who? would you as a owner who would you consider biggest rivals for kerala blasters in the hero indian super league hmm. and the other question I... is who would you consider the strongest opposition they are both different questions biggest hmm. rivals and strongest opposition so so i mean honestly it's a biggest rivals i think this is something that obviously is is in many ways decided uh, you know by the fans and and even to be very honest even this whole bengaluru rivalry I actually don't know in terms of how it started because I think there was something that happened off the pitch also you know amongst the fans that started so so uh, so I think that's <laughs> Banta, probably Banta Nikhil yeah, Banta 100% right and in yeah. terms of I mean I would say there is some like ATK which is more in terms of that in terms of that uh, the title rivalry that sort of started but I would say just because of the fans and that adds that extra layer of you know like that you know uh, wanting yeah. to win I would say probably Bangalore but in terms and of uh, in terms of Okay, so Bangalore, okay, it's the biggest Bangalore rivalry. Bangalore is a fan rivalry. But... It's a fan rivalry, uh, right? And uh, strongest rival. Uh, this one's this difficult. Season, actually, this season, you've seen the squads, you've seen the signings this season, and you have some massive names I in would... your squad yourself. With Bakari Kone coming in, and you know, there's Jose, there's Sido that you've retained from last season. Gary's here, but which team would you consider I, I would, strong I would... contender? I would suggest. I mean, I would say ATK to be honest, for the simple reason that every other squad has seen more of an overhaul, you know, than than they have. Where whereas they've sort of been able to keep that main team that's won a championship, you know, and that's yeah, that's like that's like any other club. When you have the players uh, who've won a championship, they know exactly what is expected. They have the same coach. So they also know what they're getting from the coach and then the coach from the players. So I would say you know ATK is 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 a strong team this year. So but we've we've had a good record against them. In the past, so that's what I love. <laughs> <laughs> Very cheeky, Nikhil. I like how you just you just put that. You know, the opening game last year was also it was Kerala Blasters versus ATK. Even even yeah. then, and then you all beat them in that opening game, and you never yes, let them forget yes. about the fact, even after they won yeah. the title. Absolutely. Okay. What? Absolutely. You're a massive football fan. What kind of football do you like? So I'm not asking generally. What kind of football will mm. KBFC play this season? But mm-hmm. what football do you like? So I think I think honestly I think the answer to anyone would be entertainment. You know, you when you're watching a game, uh, you know. But at the end of the day, I feel like this is you know for for me personally, I think uh, it doesn't matter how you win, but you have to win. You know, so there mm-hmm. there will be times where you sort of have to let go of that. You know, that entertaining to, to you know not stick to that that particular style. So I think whatever it whatever you need to do to get that win is is how I would see it. You know, but. Mm-hmm. when i'm watching obviously and uh, you know currently i'm frustrated with in many ways with manu also is is inconsistency and because but last play, night was good last night was good but i would just like them to play that way you know with a certain intent i think intent is super important you know an intent to, to sort of to win a game i think that mentality is, is so important and i think that's something we want to drive home this uh, this year with with the players that no matter what game you are what situation you are you're playing to win you know and and you cannot you cannot settle for anything less and and you know and i think yeah. every team wants that but in terms of something that i would say you know uh that really stands out to me is is that this that intent and that fight that you're seeing from from players uh and if you're seeing yeah. that on a pitch i got it nikhil are you on like one on one in touch with the players do you talk to them i mean i know you will you be coming down to goa for the matches 
I I yeah I will be in Goa for sure. Uh, but I mean on a day to day, obviously you uh, because Carlos is with the team right now, you know. So of, of course. course, but and a lot of the conversation sort of happens uh, happens through him. But you know, I think it also just in, in many ways, I think there are conversations sometimes that need to be had where where you do, you know, uh, where you are in touch with players. And I think last year for me was was a different role in in, in the club as well. I wasn't you know I wasn't directly looking at everything. Uh, I was yeah. I was in amongst the team. I was in the hotel, so I got a I got a good chance to meet a lot of the players, you know. And they're all great guys, and and it's a very young team till date, uh, also, you know. And and, it's and you're a very young also. owner. Like you all must yeah, be just I, patting I, each other on the back and saying, "Chal yeah." It, 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 yeah, it is. I mean, to be honest, I think and, and that works, you know, because ultimately it's not like you know I I don't want to be like it, it doesn't need to be sensationalized. Sometimes the fact that you know I'm still 24, and I think that's the best way to get through to another 24, 25 year old because that's the average age of the squad as well. you know and you mm-hmm. just need to be real with them and that's what we try and do you know so for from a lot yeah. of the players of course some of the new ones i haven't gotten a chance to meet but all of yeah. the guys who were there from last year at least great guys uh, you know all of them and and that's what matters you want a good squad you yeah. want a squad that's sort of motivated that's together and there's a great team spirit about them so to that uh, yes that's definitely there so, so till now so you being the young sky in from your family and you you know taking charge of such a massive responsibility does your father mr prasad or anyone from your family and all do you do you like talk to them do you swap ideas with them do you call up and vent your frustration like do you all, My, it's, do, it's, do you all have different opinions you know it's really funny like if you honestly since you asked me earlier you know what is it like on you know on a day to day basis i think my mom at this point there's like a few people she like the moment i pick up a phone if it's careless she like if it's careless please put it down right now you know there's there be rules and it's how it happens you know that's with careless and there's other people also in the club of speak and things like that so And it's really funny. Your mom you asks you to hang up the phone on Carol. <laughs> yeah, on Carol. Please, I hope he's listening. I hope he's watching. <laughs> he knows that. At your age, head. normally your mom would ask you to hang up on most women. She's asking you to hang up I mean, on your sporting director. That, which is why she's worried. She's like, "What is this? Why are you talking to three men for five, six, ten times a day?" That's her concern. So now you know. And then, and, and, oh. and my dad also. To be honest, my dad as well. I think my entire family is super, you know, super into it because actually the the whole reason we even got into sports field from the beginning, right? Actually, no, I don't know if many people know this, but from my dad's point of view, we first started off with badminton in Hyderabad about ten yeah. years ago with with the yeah. Gopi Chand Academy, you know. So it's actually remember that the Gopi Chand Academy, and and his thought was, look, and, and I remember asking him this, you know, at, at that point when I was really young kid, I was playing cricket, so I was like, oh, but why badminton? So and his answer was simple: you see, ah, uh, you know. And, and I think now, when you're when 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 at least I'm in a club and I'm working at a club uh, in football, we also have kabaddi, and you see the mm-hmm. kind of change that has happened because of that one decision. You know, from his point of view, there are so many people looking up to to a sport, looking to a sport being providing a proper career and things like that. And badminton yes. has grown tremendously. So that's sort of the reason why we got in, and and that passion has always been there. You know, and whatever we got into, so that that comes with football also. So he's. He's a he's a big fan, and of course, from his point, he never grew up playing or watching football too much. But even right now, like if I go into his room at like eleven, twelve, like you know, even at night, he's watching players. You know, he's watching matches. He's he's trying to go back into like the last two, three seasons watching all those matches to just understand, you know, what did we do and how are we improving now. So, and 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 there is, you know, we're always discussing. It's always an ongoing conversation, which is why we drive our uh, everyone else around mad, but we love it. So. But till you agree on discussions, it's one thing. What happens when there's a disagreement? Like you say, okay, okay, I want this player. Okay, this is worth this much. Whatever, not necessarily a player, uh-huh. but something, an investment. Okay, this is worth this much. We should do this. Or if there is a difference of opinion, what happens? Then? Do you so, say so. in my team, I'm calling the shot? <laughs> no, so I shouldn't say this, but I will in any case because it's almost like, "Chalo, Dad, you had two years. Now let me at least try my." <laughs> you know, that's what I so I've said that to him, but in a totally, in a totally, totally, totally casual manner. You know. And that's good. Then, now there's a committee in then. place. So <laughs> okay. So now, oh my God. So now even more responsibility on your shoulder because he can always turn on and tell you like absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So so more of that. Wow. We wish you all the best, Nikhil. Can you imagine? We've been talking for fifty-five minutes and, then, and time's yeah. just time's <laughs> just flying because there's just so much that we have to talk about. But because we're running out of time, I have four minutes left on this chat, and there's thousands of fans watching you right now. What would be your one-on-one message to the fans who are watching right now? What would you tell them? So, I mean, the the first thing is is always is is a thank you. You know, we don't get a chance to to do this very often. Uh, you know, but there is a lot of lot of lot of uh, thankfulness for you guys and everything that you guys do because you are in every sense of the way uh, the heartbeat of the club. You know, and without you, a lot of things that we do also that extra sense of you know that that energy is, is what we sort of also try to derive from. 
from you guys so that's the first thing to say is is a thank you you know and and, and the second obviously is is we're going to miss you terribly and this i know i can speak on behalf of of not just the management or anything but even the players and the sudden conversations because that's an ongoing discussion you know and and yeah. the the current set of the players who've been there are only trying to explain to the ones coming in that how big it really can be you know and we know this yeah. but i just wish they could have seen this but in every sense of the way i also trust that you guys will still find a way to make yourself heard and and it's our responsibility also to try to give you that opportunity and we will and you know and 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 that's where we are and most importantly probably is the fact that we we we've tried to put in the right you know the the, the, the at least the building blocks in place to ensure some level of consistency over the next 5 uh, years not just about one or two years so just trust the process in terms of what we're trying to trying to achieve so hopefully we'll Lovely. have a good reason to celebrate very soon They're lovely so many yeah. yellow hearts coming in and they're all they're all sending you a lot of love which i know i know what it is in malayalam that's the only thing i actually know in malayalam so i can read the comment and i figure out that they're sending you love nikhil thank you so much on behalf of all the fans of kerala blasters not just manya pada just fans everywhere who are watching this and who are going to be watching repeats of this thank you so much just make us a promise you will talk to the fans again very soon through the season fortunately when you're somewhere at the top of the table you know like we have yeah. qualified let's hopefully, do another live hopefully. session <laughs> <laughs> done 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 no no thank done. you thank you so much for this kuri and then thanks so thanks for having this and thanks for having thank me thank you so much and yeah, thank please. you for being such a breath of fresh air and being so open no holds barred conversation it was so good you answered most of everything that we put out over there for you thank you nikhil Hello. and yours Thanks. wishing you and the rest of the team good luck and on behalf of the players uh, sorry on behalf of the fans who can't meet the players and the team please every time you get a chance convey the love to them that these fans Absolutely. have Absolutely thank you thank you so much thank you Manifest. nikhil thank, all thank. right and you, i'll see you soon also, since you since you've been a part of 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 this session since the beginning so you also can also support hyderabad and and that should be very clear also <laughs> <laughs> That will put our old self put that back on you. <laughs> done, Nikhil. Done deal. We'll so, talk again. Kerala qualifies perfect. for the for the semis this year, and we'll talk once again. Done, done. Thank, thank you, Nikhil. You so thank much. you thank so you. much. Bye. 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 Okay, guys. So that was Nikhil Bardwaj, the youngest and was such a savvy owner of Kerala Blasters. He had such positive things to say, and guys, trust me, everything that. the team can do not just the players the management the support staff the coaching staff everything that they can do they are doing their level best to give you guys a season to remember they know that the fans cannot be with them i've been sure there have been some practice matches also that kerala blasters have been playing pre season friendly matches and stuff every time they've talked about the fans do not ever forget how important you are to these players when they take to that pitch you may not be directly there physically present in the stadium but with these initiatives for banners and flags that you all are taking this season keep that yellow flag flying high and stay proud thank you so much for joining me on off the pitch with kuri rani i'll see you guys very soon and wish you all the best for the upcoming season thanks guys bye